Well, hey there, everyone. My name is Brady. Welcome to North Metro Church, and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. Before our service gets started, here are three things you need to know, highlighting some of the great things coming up for you and your family here at NMC. Group Connect is designed to help those looking to join a live group. During Group Connect, you'll experience community in a large group with the next step of transitioning into a life group with those that you've met during the study. Complimentary child care is available, and the deadline to register is Wednesday, August 22nd. Our next Group Connect study begins on Sunday, August 26th at 4 p.m. We're kicking off this fall with a special time of serving our community. That's right, Saturday Serve is back. This Saturday, August 11th at 8.15 a.m., we've got the opportunity to start the school year by laying the needs of our community at the foot of the cross through our prayers. We're gonna gather at the NMC Cafe for a light breakfast, spend some time worshiping, and then go to different locations around our city to pray. Bring your family, your life group, a friend, or just come and meet some new people as together we worship and embrace our community in prayer. To RSVP for this month's Saturday Serve, visit the outreach page at northmetro.org. Our women and men's ministries are kicking off this week with the Women's Gathering on August 13th and Man Church on August 14th. Designed to inspire and inform the men and women of NMC, we hope that you and your friends can join us for a delicious meal, worship, and maybe meet some new people at these events. Ladies, the deadline to register for the Women's Gathering is August 9th, and for guys, the deadline to register for Man Church is August 12th. Visit the NMC Groups page on northmetro.org for more info and to RSVP. Well, that's it for this week's three things you need to know. For more on these events and everything else happening at NMC, pick up a copy of this month's newsletter out in the lobbies. And now, begin to prepare your heart for worship. Today's service begins in one minute. Spirit of 
the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your
at North Metro Church. We're super um, happy that you're here with us. We just want to go ahead and continue and worship God together as a family with this next song. Thank you. 
North Metro. I don't know where you are this morning. You may just need to know that our God is a God of miracles. And when we think miracles, we always think these grand things and gosh, he can do that because he's God. But your God, your heavenly father can do miracles in tiny ways. Maybe there was a relationship today you need a miracle in. Maybe there was a phone call this week you need a miracle in. Maybe a bill came due, you need a miracle in. And I just want you to know your heavenly father knows that and he cares this morning. And so I would just love right now if we could, if I could pray with you and pray for you. Father, we thank you that you are the God of miracles. Whether we know you or not, whether we have an unbelievable history with you or not, it doesn't matter. God, you are not confined to a box. You're a big God. You're a big God who moves in big ways, but you're also a big God who moves in small ways. And so I pray today, all of us, all of us in the sound of my voice, myself included, God, that if we need a miracle this morning, we will just look to you and ask and trust what you're going to do with it. Thank you then that you care. Thank you enough, God, that you, you care where we are and what we're going through. And I just pray, God, we get to watch. We're going to lean into you this morning, and we're going to watch you lean back. Lean right to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, North Metro, good morning to you. My name is Justin. I'm one of the pastors on staff here. We are so thrilled you're with us this morning. Thank you for being with us. It has been a busy week for a lot of you. School has kicked off. And this is what we call our fall kickoff. That is today, August 5th. It's happening and the fall kickoff is here as a church. And we cannot be more thrilled that you chose to be with us today. So thank you so much. I'd love to say hello to you who are online. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love syncing up with you and hearing where you're coming from and your stories. It's amazing to see that every week. And those of you who are in the theater, hello to you. We hope you're enjoying the worship up there. And thank you so much for being with us as well. If you are new with us or you've been with us for a couple of weeks, I want to let you know that there is a connection card on the seat next to you. And we do that intentionally because we want to connect. <laughs> That's why it's called a connection card. You may have a question about us as a church. Maybe you have a question about how to get involved. Or maybe you have a, Christ uh, a question about Christianity 101, maybe some of the basics. If you will just take that, fill it out, and hand it to a host team member on your way out, we will follow up with you this week. We will follow up. It is a priority to us to make sure you get connected and we answer those questions. As a church, uh, we have been blown away by how we get to do things in this community because of your generosity. A lot of you recently did some stuff for our backpack drive, and there are countless students in this community that are having a different school year because of you, North Metro. Thank you so much. Thank you for how you give. Thank you for what you do. Thank you that you trust us and you partner with us to give the love of God to this community. And so that's what we get to do because of your generosity. So thank you so much. So if you have a tithe and offering today, you can fill that out and hand that to a host team member on your way out. And we just wanna thank you so much because we don't take that lightly at all. What we do, yes, we have to pay the light bills, but that is not what you're going towards, man. You, what you guys do helps us impact a community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll never stop saying that. Well, if you didn't know, we are kicking off a brand new series today, and we are so thrilled about that. We're excited about it. It is called Would You Rather, and you're going to get to hear Rob talk about the one of that in a minute, because we're going to have some fun in North Metro. I hope you're ready for the next few weeks. We're going to have a lot of fun together. But man, I can't wait. I get to hear a little bit of what Rob's going today, and you guys are in for a treat. We're going to have a great day. We're going to have a great, great day together. So in light of that, in light of school starting back, and in light of the series, I would love for you to take a moment to look and get to know your neighbor. And why don't you just go ahead and ask your neighbor, hey, with school starting back and everything, so would you rather have summer break or would you rather have no break at all? <laughs> you guys figure that one out together. Well, good morning, North Metro. Oh, that was lame. Try it again. Good morning, North Metro. Yeah, thank you. That's how we do that. Yeah, I bet no one said no break, okay? I'm sure no one said that. Uh, hey, uh, I am so excited about this series, but, but uh, I'll tell you something I'm also excited about, uh, and I want to uh, kind of make a big, of announce, big announcement here today. I'm excited about what's going on on that side of the building. For those of you who are new, I just want to let you know, unapologetically, our budget will always be lopsided towards the next generation. They're incredibly important to us that the next generation that we invest in them and pour into them, 
and uh, really some really cool things going on. And so for the past five years, we've had this amazing person leading our children's ministry named Rebecca Ross. She's about to finish up her second master's. She's brilliant, she's awesome. And so uh, if you would, please give Rebecca a big giant welcome, please. So uh, Rebecca just told me we've broken a record that we almost have 500 kids yes. at first service. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, almost 500 kids just in first service. Yeah, that's awesome. Better you than me. Awesome. Hey, listen, <laughs> here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. A little over a year ago, John Maggard, our executive pastor, and I came to Rebecca and said, hey, as we survey just the staff org chart, here's what I realized. Uh, we need someone to give leadership to the entire next generation, so children, middle, high, and high school, and we believe that God's calling you to that position. And she said yes, and so that means for this past year and then some, she's been doing two jobs. And what we told her was, Rebecca, here's the reality. We know you've been teaching for years, and now you've been doing this for years, but you're going to have to walk away from that because you can't do this forever. And so we prayed and we processed. We knew we would need to hire a new uh, children's pastor. And so as of today, she is no longer our children's pastor. And I know, I know, because she's much loved, right? But here's what we did. We said, okay, let's pray, and let's ask around. And, and this is no small ministry, so we need the best of the best. And so we reached out to Pine Cove Camps, after suggestion from one of our uh, members of our personnel team, and we reached out, and they said, oh, I've got someone. He's led camps before. This guy's top-notch. He's been a teacher. He's crazy creative. I don't know if he'll go, though. I don't know if he'll move. And so they sent you the resume, they did, and I took one look at it, and I was like, wow, this, I think this is our guy. And so um, I called the leadership that I know in Pine Cove from across the country and got some amazing feedback, but there was this big, like, glaring thing yeah. that he didn't live in the United States. Right. He He's lived a... in South Dakota. Right. Which... <laughs> And humans don't normally live there. I don't think anyone live lives there but cattle. So right. yeah. uh, I was like, how, how do we do this? Does he speak the language? Do right? they have the planes that go to South That's Dakota and it, will we be able to understand right. him? So you yes. got your passport. It was awesome. So uh, we brought, uh, we contacted him and said, hey, the Lord's leading this way. Brought him in uh, several interviews, prayer processing. And so I'm incredibly excited to introduce to you our new children's pastor. Please give it up for Nathan Woodward. Awesome, awesome. We broke a record, Nathan. That's all on you now. All right. It's all you. You <laughs> deal with it. All right. But then we have another problem. So our current student pastor, Michael Lumpkin, has been here for several years, and he came to us throughout this year just saying, I think God is stirring my heart, right? We were called on assignments, and he said, man, I love students, but I, I'm realizing I feel like God's calling me to minister actually to their parents, to the adults. And so we said, well, let's pray. Let's see what God does. And sure enough, after a long time of processing and prayer and just some deep soul searching, we said, hey, that's the case. We think that we agree with you. And Bud Dar, who's over, all, over adult ministry, said, I've got a position we need to create as life group pastor under Daniel uh, Hicks, who's our group pastor. And I think Michael would just knock it out of the park. And so we have transitioned Michael to that position. The problem, it leaves open a gap. And as soon as that happened, I remember I was in the room, both you and John Maggie were going, we have got to contact this guy, he used to be on staff, didn't serve in student ministry, yep. but this guy could talk to a corpse and it would respond. It would. And so he was serving for the past several years at a different church, he was here for a year, and he said the same time, because he had a conversation with Michael about this, because they're friends, he said he sensed God stirring, and he and his wife Brooke prayed, and so please give it up, they just started this week, please give it up for our new student pastor, Matt Johnston. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. So here's what I want you to do real quick. Everybody stand up. If you feel comfortable, I want to pray for these three amazing people because they're in these new positions. Also, Michael is not on stage. But if you would, if you feel comfortable, just extend a hand just as to say, I'm with you in this, and I want to pray for them. Father, thank you for these amazing people. God, what you've called them to do is so crazy important, Lord. It's so important because this next generation matters. It matters to you and it matters to us. And so I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just grant them, Lord, a fresh anointing every day, God, that you would move within them and through them in wisdom and power and compassion and love. And God, may you get all the glory in Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. All right, so we're in a new series called Would You Rather. Now, I don't know if you know about this whole series called Would You Rather, but it's basically a game where you just kind of take a couple things and throw them out. You may have heard it called This or That. It's like a get-to-know-you game where you can play it in the car with your kids. And so I just figured, hey, if we're going to do a series, we probably ought to play. So just around where you are, the people who are around you, where family members, friends, or even strangers, I love the stranger thing, here's the questions that you have to answer, okay? Would you rather... Win a million dollars or find true love, right? Go ahead. Now, if you're sitting next to your true love, this is an easy one. All right. All right, here's the next one. Here's the next one. Would you rather, would you rather have legs as long as fingers or fingers as long as legs? Go. Yeah. All right, here's the next one. Hold on. We're going. We're moving along. Would you rather leave a trail of paprika wherever you walked or have eyebrows that moved around your face whenever you talked? Go. Yeah, neither. Neither, right? Okay, here's the last one, the most important one, and you have to answer this one. Would you rather sandpaper as toilet paper or hot sauce as eye drops? Yeah, I know. Go ahead. So, so clearly, right, this, this, this game, this conversation pits two things against each other, and it could be two good options or, could, or two bad options, and you have to choose which one, right? And it's hard to think of a situation where sandpaper as toilet paper is the right answer, but clearly it is in this situation. And so uh, in the next couple of weeks, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to dive into a letter that Paul wrote to his apostle, Timothy, and we're going to unearth a couple of different options because the reality is, is that there are contrasts in scriptures where, where God is going to put before two options, two kinds of options, or two sets of values, or, or two uh, kinds of attitudes, or two types of character traits, and we're going to have to ask which one we would actually choose. One example is in Matthew chapter seven where Jesus talks about the wide path and the narrow path. And the wide path, God says, everybody's running down that, but the narrow path is the one that, that I have set out for you. It's, it has my protection and my love and my sovereignty, and so that's the one I need you to choose. And later on, there's actually another uh, parable in that same chapter where a story that Jesus talks about the wise man who builds his house on a foundation of rock, and then there's the foolish man who builds his house on the foundation of sand. And he goes on to say, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. So again, in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to unearth, uh, looking in specifically uh, the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, his first letter, in, at the end of chapter 6, and to ask ourselves, which one would we rather? We have to wrestle with that because Paul's people were wrestling with it, and I'm sure these issues are things that we're going to wrestle with. And so without further ado, today's topic is, would you rather live a life marked by wisdom or live a life marked by foolishness? Now, without context, this is a no-brainer, right? Who in their right mind would choose the latter? But the problem is, you know this, all the options put before us, they don't have, or none of them have a big neon sign hanging over them saying, this is wise, this is stupid, or foolish, sorry, kids in the room, right? Because here's the thing, man, these, these options, they vie for our emotions. They vie for our needs, our wants, and our feelings. And so it's not, it's not that easy. And so again, Paul is going to speak into Timothy and he's going to challenge him to say, hey, listen, I need you to come alongside, I need you to come alongside uh, these people and teach them the way, my way, the things, my protective boundaries, to say within my protective boundaries of love and, and grace. And so some of the things he's talking about in the beginning of the chapter, he says, hey, Timothy, teach these things, Timothy and encourage everyone to obey them. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. 
Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over meaning, the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicions. These people are always, they, they always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Yet true godliness, Timothy, with contentment is itself great wealth. And so Paul is speaking to Timothy who lives in Ephesus. And this, this city of Ephesus uh, had, it, it was full of just, or not full, it, the Christians there were first generation Christians. And so it was a very prosperous city, much like Metro Atlanta. It was a very influential city, much like Metro Atlanta. And it was also a city where so many of the people were actually obsessed with chasing after things like materialism and possessions and things like that. And some of you are thinking, yeah, Rob, much like Metro Atlanta. Well, here's the thing. Paul knows Timothy. He, he loves Timothy. And he speaks to Timothy in the tone of voice, the heart behind it. His attitude is like one of a father speaking to his son. He opens up the letter with this, saying, this letter is from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, appointed by the command of God, our Savior, and Christ Jesus, who gives us hope. I am writing to Timothy, my true son in the faith. May God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord, give you grace, Timothy. May he give you mercy and give you peace because he knows, he knows how difficult this would actually wind up being. He knows how hard it would be to love and to lead the people that he's called to. And so in this moment where Paul is saying, hey, uh, Timothy, uh, there's, this, there's this kind of, this one verse that we're gonna live in today, we're gonna unpack it. It's out of all that that Paul would say these words in chapter six, verse 11. But you, Timothy, you're a man of God, so run from all these evil things. Pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith, love, and perseverance and gentleness. And so out of this, this right here is a key turning point in this letter. It comes after Paul has given this whole list of things that say, hey, this is, these are the challenges. These are the struggles that people are having to live with. The followers of Jesus are having to struggle with. But then it also comes right before. He tells them to say, hey, I'm gonna challenge you, Timothy, to live a different way and challenge them to live a different way. And I love how he starts it off with these two words, but you, but you, Timothy. See, everybody else, they think this way about these things, but you, Timothy, you're to think and live a different way. See, Timothy, everyone else is, looks at money and possessions this way, deals with it this way, but you, Timothy, the way you think, the way you handle money and possessions, it's different. See, this is the way that the people around you wanna handle and think about sex and pleasure, but you, Timothy, you, you handle money and possessions and relationships a different way, a different way. And here's the thing. The thing about God's wisdom is often in the eyes of others, it too is seen as foolishness. I mean, God's very wisdom, it says in scripture that his, his God's wisdom is seen as foolishness. And let me give you a few examples I was thinking about. There's a, a young couple who uh, they are married and they're followers of Jesus and they are just, they're, they're just broken by the things they see around the world and their community. And they say, man, I wanna be a part of the solution. And so they begin to tithe, to give generously to the causes and the mission of God through their church. But her father finds out about it, who's not a Christian, and he's irate. And so he writes a letter to the church, condemning them to say, you are causing my children to be foolish. See, what he calls foolish, God calls generous. What he's calling foolish, God calls obedience. Or maybe it's this, it's a middle high kid who gets made fun of because his parents have actually canceled their cable and their internet bill, uh, their service, so that they can actually start to support a couple of kids in uh, Africa through Compassion International. And they tell them, say, look, this is not forever, but right now we don't have that in our budget. We hopefully soon will, and so, but we feel strongly that God wants us to care for these people, these children who can't care for themselves. And he shares that with his friends, but they just think he's weird. Or maybe it's a, a young married businesswoman. She's at a conference with all of her colleagues and after dinner one night she says, I'm going back to my hotel room and she gets made fun of and mocked because she won't go out to the bars and the clubs with the guys. 
or maybe it's this, it's a, it's a, it's a young couple, they've started dating, and they said, hey, we, we wanna remain pure, we're not gonna have sex until we get married. But all their friends go, you guys are just weird. That's not how it works. Everyone knows you test drive the car before you buy it. And so all too often, in the eyes of so many people, God's protective and loving wisdom seems like foolishness. And so he goes on, but you, Timothy, you're a man of God. He's speaking to his identity in this moment. Paul is trying to say, hey, Timothy, I wanna remind you of who you are, or maybe more importantly, whose you are. Because here's what I know, behavior flows from identity. What you do often flows out of who you are or who you believe you are. I mean, for, for years I was a college pastor and uh, I, I would uh, you know, connect with all the college students and we'd have conversations and, and often the conversation would lead to, hey, we're going out with my friends tonight or this weekend, we're gonna go to this and do that. And I would always say the same thing. Hey guys, don't forget, Make wise decisions and never forget whose you are. Never forget whose you are because here's what I know. When you remember who you are, you will know what to do. Because knowing whose you are helps you understand who you are. And when you remember who you are, you will actually know, you'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. And so Paul is speaking to Timothy and he's speaking to Timothy and he's again reminding him of who he is. And he didn't have to tell him who he was because Timothy has known who he was for a really, really, really long time. In 2 Timothy, another letter that Paul writes to him, he says, hey, I remember, Timothy, I remember your genuine faith, not just your facade faith or your, I just see you on Sunday faith. No, I remember your genuine faith for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I know that same faith continues strong in you. Again, speaking about identity and everything flows out of identity. Our choices we make flows out of our identity. And here's what I've noticed. It's a problem and it's a blessing. Could be either or. We often allow what other people think of us to define us. And sometimes that's a problem and sometimes that's actually a blessing, and I think it's in two different ways where we see this. Number one, foundational factors. Maybe for you, you had a parent or a teacher, a coach, you know, a, a friend. They spoke words into you at an early age. And for some of you, maybe that was just great stuff. Man, for like for me, man, my, my parents, I had two loving parents, uh, and they always spoke belief into me. They always spoke encouragement into me. Anytime I, I won an award or I made a grade or won a race or something like that, I still can hear my mom saying, I always knew you could do it. I always knew you could do it. I always knew you could do it. And so I don't know if that is, is, is your story, but, but I've tried to pass that on. My wife and I have tried to pass that on to our children. Like when my girls were just young, I mean, young, they couldn't even speak. I was saying it to them. And when they could speak, I kept saying it over. And I still say it to them today, things like, hey, you are beautiful. You are so smart. You are so kind. You are so compassionate. I still remember when Ellie was about six years old, I came to her once again. Ellie, you know what? You are so beautiful. She's like, I know, Dad. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm smart. And there was a moment, a fraction of a second, I thought, ooh, I may want to kind of give some context because I don't want her to be around her friends going, I'm beautiful. Hey, by the way, I'm smart. But I didn't say anything. You know why? Because I knew as she grew up, as my girls grew up, I knew the world around them in some form or fashion would try to convince them of otherwise. And so I wanted the thing that was implanted in them to know, here's, what, here's what's true. You are beautiful, you are smart, you are compassionate, you are kind, and a host of other adjectives that I gave, descriptions I gave. And so I don't know if that is you, but the problem is, is sometimes that's been the opposite. And some words spoken over you tragically may have been things by someone saying things like, you're fat, you're stupid, you're a failure, you'll never measure up, you should never do that, you can't do that. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to identity. It's not just foundational factors, it also comes to re reiterated reminders. 
And that happens as we get older. Maybe the same parents, the same coaches, the same teachers, but also spouses, bosses, coworkers. Maybe passing on those same words, just reiterating that thing. And you start to believe who you are by what they say about you, subconsciously or consciously. And so here's a question, one of many today I want to throw out to you. I want you to wrestle with this week. What was spoken into you? As you were a child, as you were growing up, even now, what what is spoken into you? What do you actually believe about yourself, about who you are? And the second question is this, how has it shaped your choices today? Because behavior flows out of identity. You may be simply living out a self-fulfilling prophecy And that's why maybe you've made some of the decisions you've made because for some of you in the room today, here's what I know. You get to be grateful for your upbringing, that you had people who spoke into you words of belief and love, and some of you have a legacy of faith that was passed down to you, and you you get to celebrate that. You get to be grateful for that. For some of you, for many of you, I know that you, you you had wisdom modeled for you. And so that was a gift. But here's what I also know. Tragically, I know that some of you, you didn't. For some of you, you had foolishness modeled. For some of you, you had destructive words spoken into you. For some of you, 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 you didn't have a, a legacy of wisdom, a legacy of faith. You didn't have anything. And so here you are. And so would you be willing to wrestle with that? Because some of you, you need to embrace that identity, that that positive thing, that from God, Holy Spirit moved into your parents or your teacher or your coach that was given to you. But some of you, you don't need to embrace it. You need to reject it because it's destructive. Because possibly even right now, you're thinking back on some of the choices that you made and you know you made them because of what was spoken into you. And you need to reject that identity and you need to receive the one given to us by our heavenly father through Jesus Christ who calls us sons and daughters. That we are sons and daughters of the God who loves us immeasurably more than we could ever possibly imagine. A loving, compassionate, full of grace and love and truth, sovereign God of creation who speaks to you says, if you'll trust me, if you'll trust me, You'll be mine, and I'll be yours forever and ever and ever. And that is where you'll get your identity. So Paul moves on. But you, Timothy, are a man of God, so run from all these evil things. So so run from them. He said, hey, these these people here, man, they're, they're chasing after things like materialism and possessions, and not that material, like not, not the material things are in and self bad, or that possessions are intrinsically bad. No, they're not. Actually, they can be very, they can be big blessings in our life, of which I and many of you, most of you, if not all of us, we enjoy at different degrees. The problem is that they were chasing after these things, and they were saying, God, you're down here, they're up here, and that's called idolatry. But Jesus himself in Matthew 6, look what he said. But first, listen, seek his kingdom, meaning the Father's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The things you need and so many things you want that are beneficial, he'll give them to you. He'll bless you in ways you never imagined. But lean into him. Lean into him. Simply lean into him. And so Paul would go on. He'd say, but Timothy, man of God, run from all of these things. And let me, let me actually back up. For some of you in the room, Tragically, that's what you, that's the only extent, uh, that's not the right one, that's it. That's your extent of Christianity. For some of you, you think, maybe you were told, maybe it was your tradition, I don't know, that, that what you thought Christianity was, was avoiding things, simply avoiding them. And, and that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel at all. It's not about just running away from things. It's not just about avoiding things. That's simply not the gospel. It's kind of like some of the diets that go on right now, right? So, and some of you are on them. I know you are. You're in church. You won't be able to lie if I ask you to raise your hands. 
that so many diets are, are defined by what we have to restrain ourselves from, what we can't have. I can't have, hey, I'm on a new diet, can't have soda, I can't have any complex carbs, can't have fat, I can't have air, I can't have whatever. And, and studies show that actually those kind of diets, you're destined to fail. You're destined to fail. It's not about what you're always avoiding. Actually, there's something else. It's what you need to be going after. It's what you have to be going after. Like I remember when, when, when Ellie was uh, a little girl, um, she, uh, she, one day I'm there and I'm in the, just in my bedroom. I come out and Ellie has a crayon and she's going to town on a wall. She is drawing all over the wall. And in a moment, Denise and I came in the room at the same time and I'm about to go, don't draw on the wall, what are you doing? It's crazy. But my sweet wife, like hovering in like an angel, she says, Ellie, we don't draw on the wall. No, we draw on paper. She got some paper out, we draw on paper. And Ellie's like, draw on paper. We draw on paper. Because what I didn't know, and she did, because she's got some you know, teaching background stuff, and I, was, I didn't know that little kids that age, they don't hear all that. They hear the last thing you say, and that's what they live in. So if I just said, hey, Ellie, don't draw on the wall, she'd be like, draw on the wall, draw on the wall. No. She's like, draw on paper, Daddy. We draw on paper. I was like, that's right. Daddy paints the wall, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, you draw on the paper, but now Daddy was going to go play golf. But that's fine. That's good. It's good. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. No, it's fine. Let's go. Where was I? after counseling. So Paul goes on. He says, but you, Timothy, are a man of God, so run from all these things. Pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. And see, here's the key, man. It's not just about what we, it's not just about what we run away from, not at all. It's what we're pursuing. If you want to understand the Christian life, are there things we should avoid? Yeah, like a potholes in our life. Yeah, like, hey, don't jump off the cliff. Of course, those are just smart because loving fathers, right, protect and direct their kids. But it's also about, no, just pursue. It's like, Timothy, take off running. And there's gonna be some things that you're gonna have to run away from, of course, to protect yourself. But man, it's more about pursuing and we're leaning in and pursuing Jesus. And here's what I know. The decisions we make reveal what we're pursuing. The decisions we make, defi- I mean, reveal what we're pursuing. And that's, again, that was a case with all the people in Ephesus, and that's a case with all the people in Metro Atlanta and all over the world. It reveals what we're pursuing. At the end of the day, as followers of Jesus, he said, just lean in and follow me. Yeah, you're going to have to deny some things. He would say that, actually, in Luke chapter 9. He says, then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower... Well, you're going to have to, you're going to have to turn from your selfish ways and you take up your cross daily and you follow me. But the emphasis is on follow me. Just trust me. Your perspective as a human being is limited. You cannot see past this second, but I am not limited by anything. And my love for you is not limited by anything. So North Metro, here's my question. What are you pursuing? Would you be willing to wrestle with that this week? Would you be willing to ask yourself some hard questions? Would you be willing to to really process that? Maybe process that with a loved one, with a close friend. Even asking them, hey, when you look at my life, what does it look like I'm pursuing? For some of you in the room, man, God in his great kindness, and he does this every single Sunday here. I'm blown away. For some of you, you, you came here, And maybe you drove by here because you went, oh, a ski lodge on Barrett, I'll check it out. Or maybe a friend invited you, or maybe you've had a stirring in your soul and you're like, I'm gonna go to church. And maybe maybe you've been living a life where, where you have been beaten down by your own guilt and shame because some of the decisions you've made and you've been living a life of foolishness. And possibly today is the first day that you're hearing that God is not shocked by our behavior. That's why he sent Jesus. Because he came to rescue us, to redeem us. God does not do shame at all. He does forgiveness. He does love. And maybe for some of you, you've been living your life out of the identity that someone else has been speaking into you or maybe what you've even formed yourself. And today's the first day where you can get a new identity 
that you can actually leave this place knowing that you are a son or a daughter of the King of God, and he was pleased to send his son to die for you, that you were so worth it. Scripture says that it was his great pleasure. It was his great pleasure to have his son send his son to die for you so that you could be with him forever, so he could place his spirit within you to guide you, and so that he would be before you saying, man, forget about that. Just pursue me. Just trust me. Just lean into me. Because here's what, here's what Paul was saying in that long list I read at first. Three kind of categories that we're struggling with in, in Ephesus. Heresy, divisiveness, and greed. And he said, man, yeah, that's the stuff you need to avoid. But when you just put it that way, everyone would go, yeah. And he said, but you press into me. Or he said, Timothy, you press into Jesus. You press into Jesus and you pursue him. And by pursuing him, here's what it looks like. It looks like righteousness and godliness. Righteousness is that horizontal. It's that, hey, what does it look like? Man, the way I care and love and live with integrity with the people around me. And then godliness to say, God, that I'm living a life that says I'm grateful for the grace I've received. I'm living for you. I couldn't earn my salvation. I don't deserve it because I have sin in my life. You said the wages of sin are death, but you sent Jesus and that was a gift to me. And so now I get to live the grateful lifestyle. So the horizontal and the vertical, and it goes on more horizontal and vertical. It's like, yeah, so faith, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. Your vision, your perspective is not limited. Your ways are best. You want the best for me. You don't want something from me. You want something for me. And so I trust you. And again, on the vertical, and then I, because of your love moving within and through me, I'm going to love the people around me like they've never been loved. He said, Timothy, that's what you're going to need to do. And it's going to require perseverance. Keep going, keep going, keep going. But do not lose sight that in your persevering to love on these people and to teach these people, it has to be marked with gentleness. You're not going to be standing out there going, y'all are going to hell. No, it needs to be coming alongside people saying, man, I know what it's like to make decisions like that. And I love you. And I just don't want you to make those decisions. It leads to destruction. Can we walk together? Can we talk about this? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness, that all flows out of following Jesus, pursuing Jesus. That's the gospel. And so it's not just who or what are you pursuing. My last question to you this morning is this. Whose are you? Whose are you? When you know whose you are, you know who you are. And when you know who you are, your behavior will flow out of that identity. For those of you who call Jesus Lord, you are. You are a child of God. You are a son or a daughter of the King of glory, the God most high. He says that about you. I've said this before. Some of you, you need to get out one of those hello, my name is stickers and wear it to work saying, child of God, how are you? I'm Frank. I'm child of God. My name's Rob. Good to see you. Just to remind you of whose you are. And if you don't know Jesus today, it would be a great day. An amazing day. You don't have to have all the answers. Gosh, I don't have all the answers. I've been a follower of Christ over 20 years, but I know enough. As I've looked around, I see the way of Jesus is better than anything I've ever seen. That he would place his spirit within me, that he would give me full forgiveness for my sins, past, present, and future, done, forgiven, forgotten. And he says, you're my son. Or he says, you're my daughter. Trust me, you're mine, you're mine. I love you immeasurably more than you could ever possibly imagine, and maybe that's where you are today. And so here in a second, I'm gonna pray, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity, but I wanna just also pray for all of us as we try to say in this question of would you rather have a life marked by wisdom or a life marked by foolishness, God, wisdom all day long. And he says, you don't have to try a bunch of different wise things, just lean into me. And so if you would, just pray with me. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your deep love for us. Thank you for continually and constantly reaching out towards us. Thank you for being the God who doesn't just give second chances. You just give grace all over the place. And you say, come back home, turn to me. And so for those in the room that maybe, uh, maybe some of you in the room, you, you were a follower of Jesus. You were a part of church years ago, but Maybe for you, it was all about religion and you were exhausted and you left. But maybe God in his kindness says, he's wooed you back here to say, hey, don't forget about me. People are imperfect. My followers are imperfect. But Jesus is perfect for you and he's enough. He's sufficient. 
Maybe that's your story. And we'd be honored if you would continue to come here and just allow us to walk with you. Just more imperfect people living for the grace of God. And so many of you here, like you, you know it. You're like, you're tracking with Jesus. You're pursuing him. And I just want to pray a, a prayer of blessing over you. As you too, things are vying for you and foolishness is around the corner. I pray that God would give you the discernment to always see what that is. And you would lean into him and choose his path. It's a daily battle, but he's there with everything we need. And then there are those in the room. I'd be remiss. It would not be an act of love if I, if I, if I didn't mention this. As a church, God has called us to help people find and follow Jesus. And so today's the day where you're like, I, I don't want any more of this foolish life. I don't want destruction. I want to be seen and called daughter or, ki- or son of God Almighty. That's where I want my identity. Then I'm just going to ask you right now, with our eyes closed and our head bowed, that if that's you, if you've never ever prayed to ask God to be your Lord and leader, then right now you just, in your mind and your heart, you just repeat after me. That God, I'm a sinner. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to rationalize or justify. I'm imperfect. And those imperfect moments in my life, you call sin. But you, long before I was ever born, long before anyone was ever born, you put a plan in motion that you would send your son to die for us, to rescue me, to give me a new identity. Because you love us more than we could ever, ever comprehend. And so I now, I acknowledge Jesus I'm acknowledging you, confessing you as Lord and Savior of my life. And one day I'll breathe my last breath and I'll see you and you're not going to hold all my stuff against me. You're going to say, welcome home. Welcome home. And you also supernaturally, I don't fully get how it happens, but you give me the gift of the Holy Spirit to be my guide and my comforter in those moments when I have to make those choices that you are always there to give me the right answer and the power to walk in it. And so right now, it's my confession. And so here's what I'm going to ask. With our heads still bowed and our eyes still closed, we have a team of people who would love to just, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, they would love to just put a, a gift in your hand. It's just a bag. and It's got a Bible and a devotional and just some stuff from us to say how we want to come alongside and just serve you and help you. And so if you pray that for the first time, if you're in the theater or if you're in the auditorium, would you just raise your hand so they can just place that bag in your hand? Just raise it up high. Yeah, just raise them high and they'll get those to you. Father, I love the courage that you give people to make that declaration. That, that the vast majority of the people in the room, we've all made something similar like that. And God, I just thank you that you say when one person receives you, when one person believes in you and trusts you, that it, all of heaven celebrates. So God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We are desperate for you, Lord. And so help us lean into you and trust you with the rest. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You beckon me, beckon me to leave all that I know. Beckon me, beckon me to call you as my own. This is life, this is life to bid me come and die. Spirit.
get away from what Rob was saying, this idea of that when we know whose we are, it shapes our behavior. It shapes our decisions. And ultimately our, our decisions show what we're pursuing. I mean, just wow, just what a truth for all of us this morning. And I hope today, I hope today you can know whose you are. And even if you're still kind of figuring out faith, what we hope for you is that maybe for the first time possibly you just kind of lean towards God a little bit, just lean towards him. You'll be blown away about how he leans back towards you. And when you lean into God, things like patience show up in your life. Not that you become perfect at it, but there's a spirit in your heart of just this idea of, or maybe even decision-making or just some things that are going on in your life. When you just lean towards him, some of who, his character starts coming right back towards you. And so we hope, we hope that can be what you take away from this first week of, are you leaning towards him? And when you do, you'll see a little bit of that foolishness and that wisdom and how it changes. Man, wow, just so grateful for that truth this morning. And we hope that possibly if that's going on in your head or your heart this morning, that you can know that we're gonna have a prayer team down front that would love to pray with you and pray over you. And maybe you're kind of like, I don't even know what that means. That's okay. Their whole role is to just to help you get connected to your heavenly father this morning. And maybe it's not gonna be this long 35 minute prayer or anything, but it's just simply of, hey, there's what I'm trying to lean towards. I hear what's going on in my life. And they're just gonna help you connect with your heavenly father this morning. And so we hope you will take us up on that and, and take care of that with them. Um, we wanna let you know that in regards to the idea of leaning forward and this idea of kind of getting connected, um, we have some stuff that's coming up that's huge. Um, and especially in regards to the whole church, you can check that out in our newsletter. We just put out, um, we just put it out this for the fall and you can see what's going on in, in August and September right now going on. And so check it out. Uh, go grab our newsletter out in the hallway. If you're online, you can grab that digitally at our website or even in the app. You can just pull it up in the app. But this is a great way. Listen to me. This is a great way to know what's going on in North Metro Church. And from everything from kids to young adults, groups, everything. I mean, the whole spectrum you can find right here in the newsletter. And so if you're kind of like, what's going on? What can I get connected with? right here. And two of the biggest things that are coming up uh, in the next two weeks are our men's gathering, our women's gathering. 
gathering. Uh, so we're going to give you the chance to kind of get inspired, kind of give you the chance to get connected. And this is a great thing. So uh, ladies, I'd love for you, I'd love for you to sign up for the women's gathering. You can do that here. You can do it online. You're going to the chance to meet some other women, build some relationships, have some community and, and see where that's going to take you. And men, the same thing. I am, I'm going to be a part of that that night and I cannot wait for the men's gathering. So the deadline for both of those are later this week. And so we'll hope that you will hope you'll just choose to get connected and lean in and come and join us for those. But as you know, um, we get the chance every single week just to kind of live out what's happening in here. We, I hope you feel connected. I hope you feel welcome. I hope you feel loved in what's happening in here. But what, let's not let it just stay in here. Let it just stay in this room, in this building. Let it just stay where we're sitting online. Let it go out into where God has called us. Let it go out into where God's planted you into the community. Let what's happening in your head and your heart transpire, uh, just start transforming uh, where you're at. And so we hope simply that we get to live out the idea that found people, we love you, North Metro. Have a great week.